have a ton of stuff to talk about, but I don't know if we'll get it all in. But what's the most important? Well, what's most important in that you and I actually haven't talked about on the podcast. Oh, I'm excited now. I haven't really released this information. I actually like it when we don't pre-talk about anything and then it's like a surprise what we're going to talk it's about. It's kind of an odd way All right. to produce things, but that's <laughs> I mean, we've been doing this for a couple of years we have now been. And, and Chris and I did the same thing like yeah. we didn't, you know, prepare a whole lot. Um the other part of that is when you're telling the truth about things, you don't need to remember. Sure, because you can just talk about the stuff you're looking at. Yeah, we, we've yeah. lived it. Yeah. So, um, probably the most important thing that I know you know, but I haven't talked about much. I've talked a little bit about on the radio station. Those locally that live around Gaylord know what's happening because they've seen an Iron Pig sign. At a location other than Delta. I didn't know we were going to talk about this now. Yeah. This is exciting. Well, so we're getting close enough where we can kind of start talking about it. Um, this is so great. So the Iron Pig has purchased a new location. Huge. Um, it's a second location uh, right here in Gaylord. It's on Old 27 South right across from... It's uh, beautiful, by Otsuto the way. Otsuto Lake, yeah. Um, it's, it's a weird story. <laughs> weird is not necessarily the right word. It's an awesome story for us. It's a sad story for my friend Dean Bach, who was who built sure. the restaurant, sure. um, and the restaurant went under during COVID. Yep. Uh, he has become a friend of mine since then, mainly through the game of golf and us playing together nice. with a mutual friend. So we be he's in real estate now, so he's not even in the yeah. restaurant business yeah. anymore. Um, but he was one of the first people to reach out to me as soon as we had won the auction. Uh, for the property, we've been working on this for a couple of years. I know you know that. Guys, this property is incredible. I went over and toured it when Ian just got it. And, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's it's the same number of seats that we have here downtown, 99, right? Yeah. That's about the only thing that is no, the it's, same. It's a gorgeous it's bigger, restaurant. bigger, bigger bar, way more space. Huge pavilion. You can there do like 500-person concerts outside. Oh, more than that. Yeah. It's massive. We put... 500 people i think in there well let, let's uh, so i love it when things come full circle yeah. so this was the location of the largest yep gathering during the second shutdown in michigan if you remember it was the what freedom rally we held breaking the law uh, yep the law. and we held it outdoors in yep. january yep right Right at the same location, and now you own the location. Now we, own I the love this. That's what I mean. It's it, that's why I'm saying weird is not quite the right story, no. right, right adjective to use. It's incredible. It's might be absolutely more, incredible. And part of it, you know, we I, we closed on the auction back in August, so we've kind sure. of been sitting on this for a little bit. And of course, we're waiting for the liquor commission and for some other things yeah. to happen. We got some upgrades we want to do to the property. All of it takes time. Um, because it is such a big property with the pavilion next door. And, and unfortunately, it, you know, the property may have not gotten finished sure. in its entirety as the previous owners had maybe planned. So we're hoping that we can finish that aspect and, yeah. and add some more to it. So now we have our own place to have festivals, concerts, it's political incredible. rallies during the season. I and know. unfortunately, it's a little late for this season. Um, yeah, there's been nothing going on right now. No, not at all, right? <laughs> Uh, and we just had Jack Bergman in the restaurant here. No the other kidding. Day That's for, awesome. For a quick minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He came and spoke to them. I don't think everybody realizes that happens here. Like, yeah, you you've know, had this happen, a, like, not just a couple times. It's yeah. been quite a few times. Uh, a, a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously, it's only been one side of the aisle that has come sure. here, um, which, you know, glean from that what you will. I, I obviously <laughs> have taken a number of things from, from that alone. It's not to say that they're not welcome. You know, I mean, no, if, and if, I would say, I would say, honestly, Dorito you... Whitmer decided to, <laughs> <laughs> to come into the restaurant. I wouldn't tell her no. I wouldn't oh. say don't come in. You would hey, even have I a would podcast with her. Absolutely, take her money. Oh, oh, every day. But I would want her to see exactly yeah. who we are, what we are, what we do, what we're about. Whether or not she would listen or not. I mean, yeah. this is also speculative. But I don't know, man. I feel like okay. This is this isn't even a rabbit trail because it's so. I feel like this idea that RFK Jr. floated by of like, hey, I'm kind of creating this unity party, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily like Republican Democrat. It's going no, we don't want the big government overreach, yep. and we can 
we can kind of rally around several main issues that were like, we all need to fix this because yeah. this is going to be detrimental to our society. And then we have good debate about everything else. But the point is you have debate about it. Right. The point is I, you and I can disagree and then we hash that out, but there's respect and there's a mutual goal of having a better country to live yeah, in. I think we saw a flash of that with the um, Vance Walls debate. Yeah. For anybody that watched that. That's that, a good point. There yeah, was yeah, yeah. A, you know, the, the amount of, I don't even know how to describe it, but it is just sort of what we used to see in presidential yes. debates, yeah. vice presidential debates, however... Debate in general, you know, there used to be this commonality of respect for the other person. Yep. You know, and obviously Donald Trump was not the first politician to, you know, act in the manner that he did. He was the first that had a giant media machine yeah. behind him yeah. to be able to amplify some of the. Oh, I think the, everybody had a bit of a hard time with crazy it. Things. He still says crazy he things. He still says but, crazy things. But he's a known quantity for me. Yes. Right. I opened my business in 2017. Yeah. And my business did better under uh, that administration. Really? That's than interesting. The Biden administration. Wow. And when I say that, you can't you can't look at pure revenue numbers. You have to look at cost of goods, cost of sure. Labor. That's sure. really where things look at. Because 2020, 2021, those were our biggest years on record. 21 and 22, technically. Yeah. Um, but that's because of the three and a half million dollars worth of free advertising that that people like the Detroit News or mm. places like the Detroit News, M Live, all you. Uh, uh, who? What did we get? The uh, up here? No. What was the uh, magazine that we got in for the T-shirt? Newsweek. <laughs> Newsweek. <laughs> National. Can you believe we didn't even sell much of it? Like the, the funny thing was we sold so many more brisket for the brisket t-shirts yeah. and then we make national headlines with news with uh kiss me. I'm contagious. Shirt. Kiss me. I'm contagious. Yeah. Yeah. I still kind of blame myself for not being able to sell that better. Um, well, you know, we know a lot more things now. That People, you know. should go on and buy a piece of history. Is, yeah. is, is, is it's it on your website? Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kiss me. I, I still wear that all the time. No, I do too. Yeah. Kiss Absolutely. me. I'm contagious. Yeah. It's um, brilliant. And that's part of it, right? Um, national, national. Oh, that's so being good. able to. Okay, so so <laughs> going all the way back, the, the incredible part about this whole thing, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I've had some conversations here and there with with people about it, and people are very congratulatory, um, which of course I I'm grateful for. What I'm more grateful for are the people that come into the restaurant and spend money. Those that came mm. to the restaurant during the shutdowns yeah. and supporters yeah, those yeah, yeah. that weren't afraid to come to the rally january of 2020 when everybody was being told to stay in your home don't allow more than 12 people in your house for thanksgiving all those crazy things uh, we had people like you yeah that decided i'm a, i can make my own decisions i'm gonna go support somebody yeah. or this thing that is happening in this once in a lifetime hopefully event and say, listen, I support what this crazy dude is trying to yeah. do. You know, I'll buy a brisket for the brisket T-shirt. I'll yeah. come in. I'll drive six hours, three hours, whatever it is. Um, the reason why we're able to make this acquisition is because of all of those customers. That and it's yeah, it might be because I you know gave the middle finger to Whitmer and the health department, but. There are still, it's all there part are plenty of it. Of people that did that. It's all part of it. There are plenty of people that did sure. that. Sure. But none that stayed open, none yeah. that stayed the course, and none that wrapped their hands around. I, I hate to call it a movement because that sounds sort of altruistic. It, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, but let's be honest. Risk it for the brisket it is is that that it is saying listen you don't know better yeah you don't know my situation no. so the flat out pushing a law for everybody still gets me fired up just didn't work. yeah well what you so think about it this way emotionally what you did is you were it, let, let's call this instead of you because um i don't want anybody to think you're narcissistic because you're not um it's actually what what the decision you made to stay open 
and then inviting people and giving them an opportunity to take part in that in a small way yeah gave voice to an emotion they were feeling and that was being suppressed and even if somebody didn't realize they were feeling it the second they came to that event and were like oh my gosh yes i don't have to believe this like nightmare i'm in right now yeah right Th- this this actually isn't my reality There's some right bingo and isn't that funny isn't that funny it's like but that is in my mind that's the best thing about being american like that's what we were actually built on yeah and it's like that to be able to carry that torch whether it's a small or big way is like it feels meaningful and it feels like okay i'm i'm willing to stick my neck out for that yeah, yeah. yeah. and so even if that's buying a shirt and wearing it even if that's coming to the restaurant from five, 6 hours away i remember when i I had an office in here. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times I would just go upstairs because my job, I, I don't see a lot of people. I mean, I see them on Zoom, but like I'm, I'm running a software company with people all over the world. Like I, it's not like my people are here that I work with here in, right. in my town. So I would go upstairs and work in the restaurant and <clears throat> I'd have my AirPods in and I'm just cranking away work. Sometimes I'd take them out or I'd turn them off. So it, it, and I would just listen to your customers come in. Every single day I would do it, there would be some customer that came in like, oh, hey, hey, yeah, we came in here from out of town and, and we had to come here. We come here like two times a year because we need to support what they did, like mm-hmm. literally almost every single day. It's, it's unreal, honestly. I mean, never was any of that the plan. I mean, I'd be a marketing genius if that <laughs> were like, oh, what do you think about this? Like in four years. <laughs> but... Uh, the only reason why we're able to do what we're doing right, right now and opening a second location. So in a beautiful let, location, let's, let's bring it back. Right. So we're opening a second location. Yep. A lot of people have asked, are we closing downtown okay. right now? We're not going to close downtown. That yep. is the place that we started established Sweet. in 2017, 143 West main street, right where they tried to take our liquor license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff happened right here. So we're not leaving the downtown area. Okay. Not anytime soon. I've got a lease here through like 2028 or something like okay. that. Um, we have built up the energy on this side. There are no yeah. other restaurants. So there is another restaurant just down from us, a new salad place. But there, yeah. there's no other bars. There's just no other evening energy, let me put it that way, sure. on this side of the building or on this side of Main Street until we moved in. Right. So, and, and, Downtown has been good to us. We've had we've had some backs and forth, you know, with the festival Naturally. being canceled and you know all kinds of stuff. Right, it, it happens. Um, the opportunity we have now is to grow. Yeah. Right. So we're going to move all of our main production down to the new facility with the pavilion. We're creating a huge outdoor uh, picnic area in the back that'll be fenced oh, in. So incredible. Have, uh, uh, alcoholic beverages out sure. back. A wedding venue. All of these things, so we just will be way more multifaceted than being yep. kind of caged in. Downtown. The event space is going to be incredible. Can you give me um, – okay, so with obviously, um, first, when do you think ballpark opening? A couple I, months? I was originally hoping for October. Okay. But the way that the license transfer, specifically for the liquor license mm-hmm. – is really convoluted because it's going from basically a bankrupt LLC that is represented by a receiver through the process to it get till it gets sure. to me. So it makes it a little bit more difficult in the chain of custody, if you will, if I can use that term for the liquor license. Okay. Um, so we're efforting that right now. So I'm hoping within the next 30 days we should have the liquor license. Mm. The other stuff that we want to do is mainly outside curb appeal. The parking there is not awesome. Um, So we want to upgrade that. But obviously, we're getting to the end of the season to put down (laughs) pavement and stuff like that. So once the snow comes, no one's going to see the parking. Right. (laughs) So we may just do some some simple upgrades outside to make it usable for the wintertime. A drive-through window because there's a huge pizza oven in there right across from the lake. Snowmobile trail, the Iron Bell Trail is right, is there. right across the street. So snowmobilers can get right to us. ATVs, That's awesome. Side by sides. All those folks, the lake folks can all come right yeah. over. There's a couple other restaurants right there. So it'll kind of be restaurant row again. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah, this place hasn't been. I mean, it, it, it is a turnkey restaurant. 
and it's it's, it's a little apocalyptic because you know when we first walked in there yeah um it was like they just shut the lights off and left everything the was there were still on the wall the menus were still on the tables it's wild um Keg, so kegs much. of beer, you know, were still attached <laughs> to the keg system. Yeah, it's insane. You gotta be kidding! No, no, huh? Oh um, my goodness! Obviously, it's all spoiled now. But so <laughs> that that is the the top headline is that Iron Pig. Has That's huge! Congratulations! A yeah, Thank congratulations! You. That's um, massive. There is uh, a few other things that we are efforting alongside this. Okay. Um, what I'll mention briefly is an Iron Pig bourbon that we're Ooh. hoping to come online with in the next year, and it's not going to be served just in the restaurant. It'll be available at retail. No kidding! Yeah, legit Kentucky bourbon. Iron Pig, baby. But and 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 it's specifically crafted only for you. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. Amazing. Yep. So that'll be coming out. We're also looking at developing a couple of food trucks uh, for Northern Michigan, and then we're also going to be looking at a new quick service model. Mm-hmm. So if you remember those uh, little coffee huts. Yeah. I, up yeah, here, yeah, yeah. I think they're like maybe a Big B coffee might yep. have one or something, right? So I think there's one in Cadillac. It's a prefab yep. unit, right? You purchase the property, you plow in the utilities, the driveway and everything, and then you set down a prefab sure. coffee hut. Sure. For us, what we're looking to develop is a prefab barbecue stand. Nice. Right? Maybe has a few seats inside, but we smoke. We do everything right there in this prefab. Wow. So we're going to be looking in high traffic areas, for example, like on M32 here in Gaylord, with some frontage on a major highway where we can come in and plop down and set up an iron pig within a matter of weeks. Yeah. Relatively. Incredible. Uh, And then start planting those down around the state and then start working our way out franchising Mm. and stuff like that. So we're really... That would be sweet. What we've done in the last four years, and I say we, and it's not me, it's you, it's our customers, our family, right? Our staff have all been pushing this risk it for the brisket train down the tracks and is allowing us to expand our business. It's amazing. And again, it's not just me, it's all of these people. Sure, of course. Bought a bottle of barbecue sauce if you come in here and purchase the beer. Like, those people that supported us November, December, January, February, March, April through 20 and 2021, you are the reason yeah, that, that you we can do are this. still open and it's we're huge. still Thank paying you. bills and we're still hiring more employees, even more now. So that is the entire reason why we fought for, yeah. not against. against. I love right? that, by the way. So turn the page yeah. on that one. And the next piece of news I have to bring up is... This is a good podcast. Of course, we've been in the thick of it with with legal battles yep. and trying to tell the health department to go shove it with their, with their laws. Doing um, more for the state of Michigan than probably any politician has done in the last 50 years. Yeah, you know, I think me and you... Yeah, that's terrible English. You and I were having this conversation um, a few months ago, one more mm-hmm. than a few months ago, probably, mm-hmm. about... You know whether or not to run for a public office, or if, or yeah, because you were getting some requests for that, weren't what you? What kind? Yeah, what kind of uh, effect would I be able to have? Yeah. you know, as a legislator on 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 either either house. Sure. And um, I I like being in the private sector. Yeah. Usually, I get to move at my own pace. Right. I can change my menu when I want to. I can hire. I can fire. <laughs> I can do all these things. Budgetary concerns are mine only. Um, you know, my fiscal responsibility is to my LLC, yep. right, and my staff. Well, and, and you know, I, I say this often. I hate to be in a situation where somebody else's decisions affect my outcome. Yeah. And so when you get outside of the private sector and go into public service, th- that's a different dynamic. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because because now you're you've given up a ton of control. Yeah. That's so interesting. But yeah. It's, okay. It's, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So I mean, that was a, a real eye opener when basically you kind of posed the question, or actually, I think it was more of a statement. You're like, I would argue you've you've had more of an effect on these things doing this. Yes. Lawfare. Yes. Kind of don't like that word. Then if I were. 
uh, trying to introduce legislation. Yeah, the point I brought up when I in, when when you introduced this. Yes. So that's what we've been doing is trying to take power from the health department. Mm-hmm. We were effective in doing that in 2021 yep. with 2253, uh, what we call the gathering statute now, is now unconstitutional. Yeah. A couple of courts have ruled that. Um, we then turned to 2453. And just a reminder to everybody, this was the law that on the... What that this was the law that they used to mask kids, is that correct? Yeah, and to shut down the restaurants yeah. during the second shutdown of COVID. Yep, right? Yep, okay, just so making sure. 2253 was the state level health department. authorization for the state health director to give orders. Yep, 2453 gives the local health director correct the exact same, same. power, it's literally a duplicate. You just take the word state health director and you put in local health director. Um, we challenged that in court this year. Mm-hmm. That has also now been ruled unconstitutional. Incredible. In Absolutely that incredible. Lawsuit, we were asking Judge Hunter to look at four, uh, six different um, arguments yep. relating to four or five different statutes. Other statutes Other that statutes. can have a similar impact. Right. Correct? Yes. Okay. Right. And that have very ambiguous language. Yeah. That is what it's been all, all about since the beginning with the emergency powers of the governor. They took some very ambiguous language yes. and extrapolated a riot act to not allow you to go into Home Depot to buy seeds, not allow you to yeah. go to a restaurant. Okay. And now she's just getting fed by other, or she's feeding other people. Now she's... <laughs> That's pretty sanitary, actually. Pretty sanitary. Um, we'll come to that. Yeah. So... Yeah. Genetically modified a corn... Uh, right. I'm sorry. Okay. Don't, can't can't wait for that one. Can't wait for that topic. So, okay. So we got the hate, the, the, the health statute at the state level is knocked down. Yeah. The health statute to limit the gathering of people for any purpose at the local level is also been removed. What Judge Hunter didn't do was he didn't address the other statutes in our um, declaratory action. Correct. So what we did, I get it. because I'm, I'm a crazy person, I appealed his ruling. Of your win. Of the win. So, so, now, wait a second, because I think this is important. In a normal situation, that appeal would have been done by the opposing side. Well, let's say that I were an organization like the Michigan Restaurant Lodging Association. Let's just say. Who, at first, when they brought their lawsuit in 2020 to the Court of Claims, which is the swamp, they lost. Right away, boom, they got kicked out of court. Okay. They decided not to pursue anything else. They decide, well, you know, our membership probably doesn't want us. Well, you were wrong. You were dead wrong. So what I did, even with our win, yep, 2453 unconstitutional for the exact same reason as 2253, it's a violation of non-delegation. We've talked about it before. Go back and watch the podcast. Yes. The executive branch can't take power from the legislative branch, which is what they did. They took this law to limit the gathering of people for any purpose and wrote new laws that said you have to stand six feet away. You have to wear a mask. And they did not have to to go through Congress. They did not have to go to anything to do it. Right. Those were laws. I don't care what anybody says. Those were were laws laws with the full force of the police and their guns behind them. Yeah. Right. I... People are going to tell me, oh, you know, it wasn't, it was just a movie. Oh, it was. No, no, no. It was a law. When we were at that party, <laughs> outdoor party, we all knew it could have been the shut down. The police at yes. my back door with yes. their guns, that is real. Very the, real. The, the threat from the judge in Lansing to put me in jail a week before they jailed Marlena, mm-hmm. that's real. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are laws, right? We're laws. So I'm a crazy person, and I decided I'm going to appeal because it's not good enough. Thank you, Judge Hunter, sure. who had brilliant rulings. He didn't address them. Right. So we said, okay, Court of Appeals, we would like you to look at these statutes and the language behind them because they're very ambiguous, yeah. reasonable, and necessary. As shows up in these statutes all over the place. So what we did is we said, Court of Appeals, please look at 2451 specifically is the one that we You appealed at. your own win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because listen, it's not good enough. I love this. 
for two reasons. For two reasons. But I hope everybody watching right now understands how amazing this is. The, the power <laughs> still remains. They still have the power. I get it. I get it. Right? I understand. But people are going to, people ask me, you're crazy. What do you mean you appeal? Didn't you win? What? You're appealing another? What do you, blah, 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 blah. They don't understand. No. So yes, we won, but only oh on gosh. one out of six arguments. Right. Yeah, I get right? it. So it didn't I even address it. the other. So we're yeah. basically taking the other five to the yeah. court of appeals to yeah. have them look at it. Um, <laughs> and this is exactly what it's about. Look at the first page Dude, of that's this a book. says. That's a book right there. So this is our brief. This is the first page. If you can read that, it says, this, this case is about power, right? That's exactly it. The power remains. They refuse to give that mm. power back to the people. We yep. took it. We took it in 2022, yep. and we took it again earlier this spring, Yep. right? And we want to take even All of it. more of it. All Even it. more so, what we want to do, contained in this brief, again, is the vesting clauses argument, which states in our Yeah, it, help me understand vesting clauses real quick. Right, so there's a real couple of simple sentences yep. within Articles 3 or 4, 5, and 6 of the Michigan Constitution mm -hmm. for the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. In each of them, they say that the power is vested mm -hmm. in the executive branch to execute laws. Okay. Power is vested in the legislative branch to write the laws. Yep. The power is vested in the judicial branch to interpret the laws. Okay. Right? This is civics. Basic. Sure. Civics. Basic. Also, in those statutes, it does not say anything about those branches divesting that power. So relinquishing it so somebody else can use it. Right. Got it. So that's what I they get did. It. With the EPGA, right. right, the executive orders from Whitmer, she was usurping power using the Riot Act, the emergency powers of the that governor. That was divested so she then could power use it. Wow. And was taking that power to write <clears throat> more laws. Unreal. Right? Then that was ruled unconstitutional, smartly, by our Michigan Supreme Court. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. I remember then that. Then comes the health department three days later with the same edict. Which you took them down. Which we took down. We took down the health version, the state version, the local, local version. version. The biggest part was the gathering statute. Yeah. 2451, 2251, those are also in there. Those, what those say is relatively things like, let me see if I have it sitting here. Um, this is amazing, by the way. Like, I hope everybody watching right now just like is smiling to yourself that what you are hearing is a result of somebody opening a restaurant. Yeah. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. And the result of everybody rallying around a single act of defiance for principle. Yes. Right? And and I think it, I think it should just give everybody hope that it still is right to be principled. Yeah. It still is like you can go to sleep at night knowing, hey, if I'm abiding to the principles that I adhere to – that I know to be true in my conscience, that there are ways for that to come about as a beautiful outcome. It may be a fight and it might be crazy, but it still is possible. There's a lot of awesome lessons that I have learned. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been a free market person forever. Hmm. And this is proof positive of how the free market stands behind exactly that those yeah. principles they, my principles that i put out there and so yeah. listen i'm here to stand up for my staff yep and my business and my family you don't have to come and support me i, I always never tripped no. and drug anybody in here and forced our delicious barbecue in their mouth that never happened right and then we also never had COVID 19 in our restaurant not once not once to the health department even though your so, only restaurant stay open so moving this forward what we're doing is we are asking the court of appeals mm -hmm. we've briefed them the state i'm sorry the local health department in all their wisdom with their local attorneys uh well not really local livonia uh cummings mcclorley davis and acho plc these folks <laughs> sent a brief back i'm sure they're very nice and very smart people, sure sure but we've been doing this for a while for now four years yep uh, yeah, At least. next month, mm -hmm. next month. Um, 
they sent a brief back. So what that happens is we send a brief saying, well, these are our arguments. Yep. They read that. Then they do a response brief, reply brief, whatever you want to call it. And they take our arguments and then they say, well, this, we don't believe this because of this. We don't believe this should be true because of this. So they come back and they, you know, their stuff and they bring all these cases forward and uh, talk about jurisdiction and counter statements of facts and all this stuff. Let me get to the first part of it. There's so much. My quick crap. question is when are you going to pass the bar exam <laughs> and become an attorney? Because uh, it's just yeah, about time. So I'll tell you, uh, there was a, a point in time where I, I did want to be an attorney. And then I realized how much reading it is. And it's not all the courtroom drama that you see on TV and in the movies. It's all right. You didn't need to become one because you just. Uh, well, yeah. I have an amazing attorney. I know you do. David, David's down. amazing to my simplistic level that I'm able to then relay, <laughs> I'm hoping in a simplistic way. So here is their introduction. This is the first paragraph of their counter statement of facts. The introduction. The brief by Moore Murphy Hospitality LLC DBA, the Iron Pig Smokehouse, Iron Pig, is more a political manifesto against the so-called administrative state wow. than a proper legal brief the relatively sparse case law citations are often incomplete a primary reliance is placed upon law review articles which there's nothing wrong with together with opinion articles sponsored by the new Liberty level civil liberties alliance a special interest litigation entity also nothing wrong with it the heritage foundation and the cato institute so you make an argument right and then you cite legal briefs or you cite of opinion course. behind that right yep or you might cite an opinion of a supreme court justice sure right to As validate it done. yeah it's validation um it, it all goes on to say the iron pig's brief also lacks appropriate focus so down here in the uh this is just the introduction so this is how they're setting it up for the three panel judge at the court of appeals level like we're some hillbillies from up north oh that have no idea what we're talking about and it's a political manifesto. Wow. Right? Wow. Against the so-called administrative state. Down here in their footnotes, tracking down the Iron Pig's footnoted sources and finding some of the reference cases as well forces the reader into an internet scavenger hunt, requiring the appellee and this court to engage in such a, in such a quest runs afoul of MCR 7.216. Oh, means you have to actually work? <laughs> like, are you kidding me right now? This is their introduction. <laughs> wow. This is their introduction to the entire case. This whole thing is, oh, don't be, don't be swayed by these hillbillies from up north. Yeah. They're, they're citing the Cato Institute. They're citing the Heritage Foundation. Wow. What they forget is that we're citing the Michigan constitution and the severely plain language that sits there wow like it's not it's not that difficult but what they have to do is interject this idea that we're all over the place with this stuff right and we're grabbing from here and from there and from everywhere which is not the case at all we're taking from justice gorsuch we're taking from michigan supreme court we're taking from judge hunter like these are not crazy outside no. sources. But when we talk about the vesting clause argument, which nobody really knows about, mm -hmm. and we're hoping to change that, this is where they want to talk about it's an attack on the so-called administrative right. state. This is why. This is why they have to say that. Not because it is an, a, against the so-called administrative state. Mm -hmm. uh, state, not a state. This vesting clause argument will effectively demolish the administrative state. Wow. And that's what needs to happen yeah. in Michigan and at the Jeez. federal level, but in Michigan, right? So when I'm talking a few minutes ago about the Liquor Commission and all the stuff we're having to go through, mm -hmm. I had to go through a thing the other day. One agency had no idea that one office was talking to the other office. So I'm trying to get this liquor license. And they say, well, there's open violations from the old license. 
I said, okay, well, you know, let's investigate those and find out. She puts me on hold. She comes back and she said, this is the Liquor Commission enforcement lady. Very nice. She says, uh, oh, well, yeah, it looks like one of these has already been adjudicated, meaning it's it's already gone through its, right. you know, Zoom hearings and whatever. And a, a, an administrative law judge has decided what the penalty is going to be. So, okay. So, well, it looks like the other one's still open, but it's been adjudicated. It just has an open invoice. I said, okay, well, can you send me the invoice? Yeah, sure, sure. No, well, yeah, put you on hold. Five minutes later, she comes back. She says, you know, after looking at this, both of these have been adjudicated. And both of them have been, pay, been paid. I'm not sure why you're even even getting this notice. Wow. And I said, well, I'm not getting the notice. I'm trying to transfer the license. She goes, oh, my gosh. She goes, well, it certainly shouldn't be on there. I mean, this was taken care of two or three years ago. So the left hand literally doesn't even talk. Left hand doesn't talk to the right hand. Right. In their own agency. Right. In one of 24 agencies Jeez. here in Michigan. Right. So... This is what I'm talking about with the administrative state. Yep. This vesting clause argument can rein in that power that they have, that we're still trying to take back from them, yep. that they still want so badly that they're willing to go on the record and say this kind of nonsense in the very first sentence, in Jeez. the very first footnote, right? They are scared shitless of this entire thing. And I'm hoping that we get a good three-panel Court of Appeals, yeah. uh, three-judge Court of Appeals panel that will set aside this hyperbole up front and actually and look at actually the issue. actually look at the Supreme Court ruling from 2020, exactly. Judge Hunter's ruling and talking about intelligible principles and then actually have an honest assessment of what we're saying about yeah. vesting. Right? That's it's, incredible. It's that simple. But that's how arrogant these people are is they're just, nah, look at these hillbillies. They don't know what they're talking about. It's a manifesto. It's a political manifesto. Wow. Just crazy to me. So This is incredible, though. So what? So everybody understands, one, that's incredible. Two, what are the next steps and relative timeline? Of course, the timeline can't be fully understood. But yeah. what is the relative timeline in the next steps in this process? So they, they've replied brief. I believe we have 21 days to response brief back. Sure. Um, I was told originally we weren't going to. Um, I think after rereading this a couple of times and looking at the tone. Yep. It's absurd. Yeah. And I think we're going to respond brief back to this. Right. To simply point out some of the hyperbole. Yeah, right? exactly. There's nothing wrong you with, have to. with citing something from yep. the Heritage Foundation or from the Cato no, not Institute or from Gus, uh, Justice Gorsuch or any of these things. So we have 21 days to do that. Then they will set a date for oral argument. Nice. So we'll go down to Lansing to That'll the be Court in of Lansing. Appeals. Come. And we'll be in person. Uh, so sometime, maybe December, Christmas, sometime in that area. It should be before the end of the year. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it should be, um, I believe, the end of November. Wow. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'm not sure if they, if they have to, if they have a deadline to set for oral argument, okay. like they do with briefing, right? So mm -hmm. those are there's laws that state you have this amount of time to to reply back. So. Uh, we'll reply one more time to this where I think we're limited on page numbers um, and then it'll get set for an org ar argument. We'll go down, they'll go down, we'll make our, our arguments in person. And then the, there's a decision that's made from there, Then there's correct? a decision that's made. So you, I don't believe that they'll rule from the bench. Sure. Um, so they'll get together, they'll discuss it, just like at the, at the Supreme Court or Michigan Supreme Court level, there could be one judge that dissents and two that that affirm yeah, yeah. or or the okay. opposite or all three because there's three judges. There's three judges. Yeah. And so once that happens, mm -hmm. if they if two say, hey, we agree with your appeal, mm -hmm. correct? Then what? Uh, so if we win again, yeah. right? Uh, they this the health department, health department of Northwest Michigan. Mm -hmm. This is not the state. This is not the attorney general. 
this is my little yes. our little four county but it creates press it could be creates precedent though. absolutely it creates for everybody else yes it does so what i imagine will happen and i know that the health department has already reached out to the attorney general's office to try to rope them in to wow. defending this yeah of course this of is course a state of course statute yeah but <laughs> Lisa Peacock, Lisa, in all of her infinite wisdom, is the dingbat <laughs> that signed the cease and desist order that predicated all, all that. of this. Which gives if you they grounds. had never put the cease and desist order mm. on or in effect, that's what gave me the leverage in local court. Holy, that's smokes. what gave me leverage to take uh, the local statute yeah. back to Judge Hunter. Right. So we almost had to make the same ruling. That he did with 2253, saying it's a non delegate So you win at this, which there's a chance, right? I mean, there's there's, a, there's an actual chance you'll win. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and maybe even a likelihood. There is sound <clears throat> legal principle to to take down the statutes. And, and biggest... when that happens, is it true that our North Mich- uh, Northwest Michigan Health Department can no uh, – the non-delegation, they can no longer – that power can no longer be transferred to make these sweeping decisions. It's a great question. Like they were. So the answer to that is that is already true. So when we got it one yep. in spring of this year, two, four, five, three yes. is now already unconstitutional. So they cannot limit the gathering of people for any purpose or established procedures. Wow. At the state level, Think the health about director that. can't do it. And at our local level, in our four county yeah. area, this health department cannot limit the gathering of people for any purpose. What we're also seeking is to have, uh, I wish I had it sitting here in front of me. Let me look real quick. Two, four, five, one. Oh, it's right here. Um, the language we're, we're questioning is, quote, a condition which could reasonably be expected to cause death and disease. Now, they used this Jeez. one against me because they said the Iron Pig had a, quote, condition it which could reasonably cause be, okay. death and disease. They used that against me. Yeah. They provided no evidence. Of course. Right? There was <clears throat> there, as no evidence. Was anecdotal. There was no yeah, was COVID-19 anecdotal. here. Yep. Right? But the mere fact that I wasn't compliant with the law mm-hmm. is what allowed them to say that there was a condition here. Correct. If they had come in and said, we have proof positive, there's two dozen COVID-19 tests. Cases from here, outbreak, positive, you got to shut out, down for two weeks. Like they did in Lansing. Yep. Uh, back in early 2020 when there was outbreaks at the frats and sororities, they went up and put a notice. Boom. Hey, just so you know, entering this property, there has been a known outbreak here. Yep. It's incumbent upon Drew to make his own decision as an adult whether to enter that property or not. Correct. They never did that here. They never did that. They just said because Ian's non-compliant, he's violating the law. The right. law, not a mandate, the, <clears throat> the law, law. With full force of guns in jail and a fine. That's that's what this is about. This power still yep. remains. Yep. We want to take this one as well and and numerous other ones. 5203 requires cooperation if the health officer reasonably believes an individual has an infection without further evidence. I spelled evidence wrong. So literally a health officer, Mm non-elected, can think Mm -hmm. there is evidence. Right. And then take absolute power in that situation. Let's say, so the the newest thing right now is uh, the bird flu that's in, in cattle, right? It's made its way into, okay. So sure. there's a few positive cases around the country. There's been one or two here in Michigan. Let's say this thing all of a sudden becomes an outbreak. Right. The local health director, mm-hmm. whether he likes me or hates me, decides that and Dan, a nice guy, uh, that he Ian is a nice guy or Drew. Yeah. Harbors or may have mad cow or yeah, there's or, a chance or mad cow bird flu. Right, right, right. Right with. Out further evidence, he can simply stipulate that oh I harbor gosh. this infectious disease and they can quarantine me, they can test me, they can do me. And there's no do, ramifications do if they're wrong. Me. If they're wrong, there's nothing that happens. But here's to them. the crazy part. This whole thing, they get to do all these things to me first and then right. I get my constitutional rights. Right. 
after the fact. Did. And here's the thing. We think it, it, it's so funny how our minds work. We think, oh, that's, that's not going to happen. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it just did right. a minute ago. Right. But the way our so, – so humans are designed to survive. Oh, no, no. Let me be clear. Yeah. It's happening right now. What? There is extraordinary emergency powers that – the Department of Agriculture, Michigan Department yeah. of yeah. Agriculture and Rural Development has right now. Two months ago, they went into a raw milk farm in southern Michigan no, and dumped dude. tens of thousands of dollars of raw milk. Never cited a reason or a law. They simply said that they could not resell that. Right. Did they throw it out? No. They made their employees do it. So it's happening right now. And these agencies have this unmitigated power. And wow. that is our ultimate goal. Not some political manifesto against yep. the administrative state. What we want to do is, is give people the power that is rightfully ours. Yes. Right? To make decisions. It's that and if, if something truly is <clears throat> bad for the public health, then that is something that can happen in the proper procedures. Not just somebody saying yeah. this is bad and it's take it It's called the out. Emergency Management Act. Wow. The Emergency Management Act gives, that gives our mayor, our mayor can make these decisions. They have 28 days. Wow. Right? It's the same thing as closing the roads in the wintertime. Right. Stay off I-75 is closed because there's a winter storm yeah. coming through. And you know what? You can get a ticket yeah. if you're busted on. Yeah. Stay home. Right? Just happened in Florida. Yeah. Right? They say you better evacuate, yada, yada. If you're going to stay home, don't count on this, that, and the other. There is a law. 28 days. Whitmer violated that March, uh, well, April 15th or April 14th of 2020 because she did not go back to the legislature to get another 28 Got days it. to lockdown. Got it. So there are already laws Heaven forbid <clears throat> that allow something happen. Yeah, that allow for the extreme to happen in the right way. What you're saying and what you're taking down. In a down, way to give our the powers that be, whether that's local legislators mm -hmm. or state legislators, the time to figure it out. To talk to the experts. Correct. And craft a way that protects our rights. And protects the public, public health. health. And that is the problem, is these people in public health don't give two shits no, it was about weaponized. our rights. Yeah, it was weaponized. Yeah. It was absolutely weaponized and used for their and advantage. these are smart people, and I'm not trying to attack 100%, these people, I know. No. But they're single-minded yep. in what they do. Yep. And sometimes that's good, and, and other times, as we saw, that's yep. just not the way it was meant to be. This is brilliant. With the way yep. our framers yeah, Absolutely brilliant. It. One great so, job. This is this has been actually what's been fun about this. <clears throat> obviously, I've traveled with you on this journey for a long time, but the details of this are hard sometimes to articulate to somebody, even myself, who, um, it, like, if I were to become an attorney, like a dyslexic kid usually doesn't become an attorney, right? Sure. Um, and so, so, so sometimes it's like, okay, like the technical aspect and being able to walk your, talk your way through that. But I thought this discussion was very helpful because I was able to really understand and get exactly the fight you're going after for the freedoms in, or, in for the function of, of what principally should be. Yeah. And, and, and this goes back to the very first thing I said when you brought it up is Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. But I, I think I'm at least on the spectrum of correct to the tune of over 75% correct that what you have accomplished, and I say you as the collective brisket for the brisket family, is far more than most politicians' careers ever do. Well, uh, it is glaringly obvious to me now, um, knowing our legislators up here, Hmm. Um, regardless of the atmosphere in Lansing and the power that they may or may not have, they had the power at one point. Um, no bills were introduced. I think maybe a bill was introduced uh, around uh, St. Patrick's Day of this year, and obviously it went nowhere. Um, but the wins, you know, we I always joke that we, we lost our way. We failed our way to the top, right? 
Uh, a great business model, we, by the we, way. We, Some we, of the we, most we, successful people in the well, world are the best failures. Well, you sometimes you have to be. You right? have to be. If you don't a learn high, from your mistakes, then you're definitely... You have to have a high capacity for failing and disappointment. So we knew what we were... What yeah. our end goal was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't really know how we were going to get there, but we knew going through certain things, again, taking L after L, mm. in administrative court, in court Lansing with the Department of Agriculture and all these things, but all, the ultimate outcome got us to where we wanted to be. Yeah. And, that, and on the track of beating back this executive branch power that reaches far beyond the Liquor Commission, Way far beyond. beyond the Department of Agriculture. It comes into the It DNR. affected everybody. It comes into the Department of Civil Rights, right? You're yep. seeing somebody in Traverse City being sued into the ground by the state because of something she posted on Facebook. Wait, wait, wait. Sued by the state? Yeah. Not the by an individual? Civil rights. Well, oh the individuals gosh. are trying to sue her as well. But, but that's but acceptable. But task one that, that, is getting a civil rights to say, oh, yeah, this is in the, and it was, it's in the trans topic, me. of course. So there's a lot of emotion and all that around it. But the fact remains, yeah, but free emotion, speech is yeah, free speech. Uh, emotion does, like... Okay, right. that's Free different topic, different day. Right, exactly. So <laughs> and I, we don't want to even get into that, right? Because it, it, it gets so emotional. But but my point is, the power that MDCR, Michigan Department of Civil Rights, has yep. is incredible. Wow. And a lot of the, the work they do is is good work. And we, sure. And we need yeah, of a course. Department of Civil Rights, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. there are still assholes out there that are making decisions based on race, sex, and, and sure. all these other stupid things, sure. right? Uh, so there's a place for them. But this is an attempt to curb free speech. Exactly. Right? With the Department of Agriculture coming in, doing what they did to the raw milk farm, right? I cannot That is an that. attempt at, at economic slavery, right? Yes. You move over into the Michigan Public Service Commission. They're trying to build a... a, a everybody wants to call them a solar farm. They're not solar farms. A solar development. The right. power now is in Lansing with the Michigan Public Service Commission. My attorney, Dave Delaney, is now representing individuals here in Otsego County to stop this solar development and devise a plan that can be duplicated in other jurisdictions. Wow. Amazing. Based on all the work that we have been doing exactly. in the last four years and saying, listen, you want to go to administrative court? Fine. I now get a jury, yeah. a jury trial. Because of the Supreme Court decision from a few months ago. That's incredible. Right? That's a huge deal. It's a massive. So there is a wow. big movement coming to really rein all this in. And that's the stream that we're jumping into with this. And this is the way to affect change moving forward. Speaking of your biggest... All of that. Yeah, speaking of your... One, great job. And speaking of your biggest fan, Gretch, um, <laughs> what do you think... So we'll end on this because this is a great place to end. Uh, what do you think about her feeding the the podcast gal a Dorito? Uh, I saw it. And Did I? If you guys haven't seen it, you have so to see it. Weird. Apparently, it's like a um, a TikTok viral trend. I, it just because something's a viral trend doesn't mean it should like. like Is it? Apparently, Is that I don't think like the Dorito. I think it's like feeding people, which doesn't even like. Okay, so fine, it's a viral trend. Does that mean politicians, like grown adults, should do it? Like, okay, I'm in college. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is, right there. Oh, it's so bad. Is that creepy? It's so bad. It's so creepy. The look on her face is super creepy. Like, I don't care what what thing you're emulating or what you're trying to like get from a. I mean, obviously. Maybe her goal was just to get a bunch of views, but she did it because it made national news. But my goodness, was that bad? It was so cringy. Uh, the Catholics are like the Catholics are are like, hey, you're like totally mocking communion, mm -hmm. which it kind of looked like that. Mm -hmm. On the other end, it's In like a weird, creepy, pornographic sort of way. <laughs> it was so bad. Listen, you, it was. You've seen I'm people take communion more than I have, right? Have you? I'm not ever even Catholic. Seen somebody take no. No, 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 like no, 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 no. That was, and I, I'm going to like, okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. And it wasn't uh, like, they didn't even think about communion because they probably don't even know anything about religion to begin with. Let's just give them that. Okay. 
That's a fair assessment. It was <laughs> so... It, like, I felt awkward for both of them. Right. You look at it and you're like... Ugh. There are people that were questioning if that was even... If that was AI generated. Right. Um, Which you almost have to. it was just so So odd bad. And weird. And the, like the dead look in her face like what was her response yeah what cap. what was her response again because so, she was, she so, did actually make a, a an did. official response to so it. the response was something along the lines of like um this was a promotion with this uh left left wing in, influencer i hate that terminology uh for an interview that she was doing on her podcast yeah um with his influencer but it, it was supposed to be some promotion for the chips act which is a microchip. Which was supposed to be some, yeah, microchip, you know, basically bring chip production back, you know, home domestically instead of being overseas. You know, we saw the supply chain issues, you know, during the pandemic with, with chips smokes. and stuff like that. So apparently that's what this creepy video was about yesterday was the Chips Act, even though there was nothing in the there. The only that... chip in there was Doritos that... I mean, one the they picked, it, yeah, the way the they picked Doritos first off, which was like, okay, um, why not something better made? Yeah, right. Isn't I, that a Michigan y- company? Yeah, is. Uh, I mean, saying. for crying out loud, even I, I, I don't even thing. know where to start with this. It the was so bad. I mean, she's been she's been on a roll with these cringy things. Like, yeah. I mean, this is the person that is the um, executive of our state. Right? I know, not a serious person. These are not serious people that are applauding this, that are in favor of this, that think that this is how a politician should act. Get your fucking ass in the office. Yeah. I signed 17 bills the other day. Did you? (laughs) I saw the, I read the bills that you signed. Most of them were garbage. (laughs) Absolute garbage. Nobody wants half of these things that these ding dongs are are ramming through. Dude, that's that's our. This is where we're at in politics now, right? (laughs) Yes, I know. Like every, every, the number one job kids want out of high school now. Yeah. What? Social media influencer. Uh, number one job wanted by our governor right now. Social, social media, media influencer. influencer. <laughs> like, come on. This is, uh, I, I'm so embarrassed. Yes. Besides all of the other things that, okay. Yeah. So, uh, U.S. News and World Report, I, I think that was the, the, uh, publishing company that came out with a new report we are the eighth worst state in the nation oh gosh right and when these reports used to come out a few years ago yeah the democrats would say well it's because we've had decades of republican leadership and blah blah sure blah. sure sure and there's something to that argument and i'm not even gonna something defend to republic like not like, either like there's some Republicans that were terrible. Yes, there like are, there awful. Are still some Republicans that awful. were terrible, right? Yes. I'm not name names, okay? <laughs> but I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Ish. I'm kidding. He hasn't done anything for me. But uh, um, <laughs> this is such a good podcast. If you actually expect politicians to do anything for you, I have a bridge to sell you. <laughs> back to the so back to, back to the original just, point. If, 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 if you. <laughs> If any of you out there are thinking that these politicians really have your best interests at heart, all you really have to do is look at what they're saying and what they're doing. Yeah. Now, of course, they need to promote themselves. Yeah. and this, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And the other. You have to. But this woman's not running for an office. No. She's, she's done. done. Right? What is she, mm-hmm. the vice chair of the DNC party or something I like that? So, yeah, yeah. But this is a woman that has not been in our state taking care of the eighth worst state in the nation. The eighth roads still suck. State. Our education is in the dumpster. Education's tough. Do you and know, she's out running TikToks like this. Think about this from a party. So I'll end here because this is actually real to me. I'm I'm literally in the middle of having to create. Now this isn't a private school, but a private school gets funding from a public school for the special needs programs, sure. especially title programs. So the title programs, because of COVID. The increase in kids who are not proficient in language arts is staggering right now. Yeah. This is actually a massive problem, not just in our state, but in our country. Yep. Okay. So kids um, needing extra help learning how to read and write has gone through the roof. All right. Especially in the elementary age. Okay. So what happens? Our state literally chopped the title program. Title program pays for 
reading aids to be in the school to take out the kids who are struggling with reading and giving them that tutor, like mm, basically yeah. special tutoring help yeah. to catch yeah. them up. Okay. So we just cut the program. The reason I know this is because my son, who has severe apraxia, very much struggled with reading. We were blessed to have an aide that was in there taking him out every week. He was catching up on things. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's gone. Mm -hmm. and, it was, and, and we're being told, why is it gone? Well, you know what? Actually, the state cut the funding, both for the public school and the, and, and the private schools. And no longer um, do we have the funding to be able to provide that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Wait a second. The, the kids that were most affected by all this crap that we just went through mm -hmm. now are the most marginalized. Now, and think about it. My kiddo's in a, in a different position. I'm going to come in and be like, well, I'll fix that. Let's go fundraise it. Let's figure it out. We're going to get that in. Well, that's, that's the rarity, right? There's a million other kids mm -hmm. whose parents are like, oh, well, sorry, Johnny. Right. And this kid's not, not going to learn how to read. They're not going to be able to make it work in life. And we can't even do so much as to have the funding necessary to help kids learn how to read better because of a pandemic yeah, that's pathetic. that we forced them to go through with masks on at critical ages in their development. And now, especially boys, so this is an attack on boys too. So it's disproportionately higher in boys, like way disproportionately higher in boys. Right. And so now we're just basically taking out the knees of all these boys, making them a year or two or three behind mm -hmm. and now setting them up for failure. Like, like we don't understand because we can't think the long tail. Like we can't like it's very hard for most people to actually look forward 10 years and to say, oh, right. this is probably going to be a bad thing in 10 right. years. Like this is our workforce. These are all our men who are going to be going to work at 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Yeah, we want it all to be lacking and three years behind in reading. That's a great idea. Right. Like, sorry, I digress. But that's what this, it, like, that's why we're the eighth worst state. Mm -hmm. We can't even find the money to do that. It's, and it's not much money. No. Like, it's not, like, this isn't rocket science. It's, You're paying somebody like 20 bucks an hour to do this stuff. Right. And probably Give me a break. Oh, it, uh, um, but still, the point is. Yeah. Like, you can't creatively come up with a budget to figure that out. Give me a break. Right. But you can do a Doritos commercial? Or the amazing what? thing is that we are seeing... I shouldn't say amazing. What's amazing about it, I'll say in a second. We're seeing the outcomes of this, mm -hmm. right? There's a reason why third and fourth graders are mm -hmm. most affected and can't do... Can't read and can't do the math. No, math is second. Yes, it's reading and the math. And then seventh... And eighth graders are also suffering. From yes. That, right. So when you look at who was in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, in that early developmental stage, here we are two, three years later. Yep. Now seeing the effects and they've been trying to do things about it. We've yes. known about these deficiencies for two or three years. Yes. And they have poured money at this problem and it has gotten worse so i make the joke now and okay when i say more money per pu per pupil funding correct right um <laughs> i'm making the argument now that more money equals lower test scores hmm. wow so people need to think of it from from that frame of mind instead of Let's give them more money. Let's give them more money. You got to flip it on its head a little bit and mm. think about, well, we're not going to give you more money. Mm. You guys have more money than you've ever had before. Where is, is it, it going? going? Yep. And why aren't we getting those results? Right. Instead, they're just going to say, here's more money. Right. I, I sat in a school board meeting the other day, yesterday, and they said exactly that. And I sat and I watched a... Government employee, mm -hmm. a city government employee, when talking about a grant from the health department that helps pay for something similar to what you're talking about, there's matching grant funds, this, that, and the other, and they say, well, they're not going to charge the school district any more than $130,000 per year 
for this grant. So they get the grant first year, it's 100%, the next year is 60%, the next year is 30%, yeah. whatever. If there's a shortfall between what they actually spend and what they get in the grant is what they charge the school district hmm. effectively. So, <laughs> again, grant money, money just doesn't come out of nowhere. Government doesn't to, make yep. money. It's no. taxpayers. So I'm sitting here, and in the audience is a city government employee, and he, he whispers, and he says, I kind of like an in-kind donation. I was like, no, man. No, it's not like an in-kind in kind donation. donation. Those are taxpayer dollars. Just because they labeled it a grant. It comes from somewhere. Just stop it. So they yep. do these things to make you feel like they're doing something. But they're not doing but anything. But they're not. They're not. And we're going to pour money after it. But it's not the right thing. And it's no. not in the right way. It's just saying, we just put another $7 million into yep. blah, 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 whatever it is. And that's it. Yep. They don't care about the actual results. Outcomes. Yeah, there's no there's no key they performance can't. indicators. You can't. No. Nobody nobody can tell me with a straight face that they actually care about the real time results that they're creating with either their economic policies in this state or the educational outcomes that they're creating in this state. Damn. I've got to go pick up a kid. I gotta go too. I probably have some food to make. Hey. Thank you as always, you guys. Appreciate it. This was a good rant. This was a good one, though. This is this. I appreciate you taking the time uh, as always. Thank you, guys. Go follow us. uh, Risk it for the brisket. Subscribe, all that stuff. Fuelcasttv.com. Risk it for the. Yeah, if you've watched up to this point, thank you. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) Exactly. We love you. Thank you, guys. Later.